Now, my second question, uh, it's more of a, an observation on my end, turning into a question. Players uh, do swing with the helicopter finish, the one-handed finish, whatever you want to call it. I, yeah. I'm wondering if Charlie Lau's teachings, Ted Williams' teachings, and subsequently your dad's teachings, your teachings, if there are some elements that have combined between your teachings, Charlie Lau's teachings, maybe blended together, and again, the absolutes for, for both are fairly different. They're on different sides. But I wonder if there are some elements that have blended together um, with certain players. And that gun goes back to what we talked about earlier, getting to know certain players and what they're comfortable with. Is that at all true? Am I accurate? Yeah, no, they, t- they totally overlap. Um, you know, I mean, the whole uh, linear hitting was about staying on plane. So linear right. hitting wasn't about swinging down. It was about keeping your barrel in the zone as long as you can. Well, the only way to do that is to transfer your weight all the way to your front foot. Okay, so you don't rotate nearly as fast in, at all, right? Because you're drifting the whole way, but it was to keep your barrel moving on that, you know, that path. So those overlap, but I actually got a call from uh, Charlie Lau Jr. Um, who was recently, or not recently passed, but he, he passed away years ago. Um, and we were talking, you know, hitting, you know, about, you know, what we taught and what he taught. We were telling, we were saying the same thing. Right. Like for him, he was like, yeah, I want players to stride, you know, so they have a weight shift. I said, I want my players to stride so they have a weight shift. Yeah. And he said, and then they have to block that front side and stop, you know, their weight shift and rotate. And I was like, well, that's not what is in your dad's book at all. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, that's what we teach. And mm-hmm. so I said, okay. So the only thing we were hung up on, um, he, he said, you have to have a one-handed finish. Okay. You have to have a one-handed finish. Otherwise, your top hand will roll over. Yeah, that's what they were stuck on. And I said, well, I don't care if my guys have a one-hand finish or a two-hand finish because they're going to hit through the ball with both hands until they get to their power V. And then if they want to release, I said, nobody releases their hand at contact. Right. Um, but if you look at that old book, that's that's what they're they're saying so yes i mean hitting became hitting and you know after that conversation it was really funny because i'm like hitting hitting you know there there, there are certain things everybody we want to have a weight shift and then we want to stop the weight shift and we want to rotate um, we want to make sure we're on plane um, some people talk about having extension and some people don't want extension you know they want to keep the power l or whatever the heck they call it and and keep rotating around and that's you know whatever they want to teach but um there's there's not going to be any groundbreaking new moves in the world of hitting ever because mm-hmm. it's been done for so long like you know you can have different stances you can have different moves but you know when when people try to come up with new stuff it's just you don't need that stuff uh the best thing was you know even if you looked at you know we talked about charlie Lyle, we talked about jordan brett who's you know obviously one of the best hitters that ever played yeah and a hall of famer and if you look at the pictures in, in the book of George Brett, you're like, oh, my God, those are the ugliest positions I've ever seen, you know. And then you look at his swing in real life and you're like, that's one of the prettiest swings I've ever seen. But maybe if George Brett didn't think about what Walt Hriniak was telling him about getting on his front foot and, you know, whatever, you know, it's a one hand and loading up and all that stuff, maybe he wouldn't have done that. So it's the whole what works for you as a player. That's the key to, to baseball, being knowledgeable and, and understanding, okay, why do I do this and why do I do that? And what is this result? I don't, I don't really care what you're doing. Here's your result. Like you're hitting the ball too high. You're hitting the ball too low. You're hitting it too much to the opposite field. You know, whatever it is, but that's the end result. So what, do, what can we do to, to make that better, you know, to expand your, uh, your width of, of hitting, you know, so you're not unidimensional. And I, I think that's what makes good coaches is, you know, not overcomplicating the system, but finding the right result that works. Well, your conversation with Charlie Lau Jr. and you guys talking about hitting and, and your ideas overlapping, there's a prime example right there of two baseball guys who've spent their entire lives around this game, make a living from this game, who have different ideas about things, but they're able to communicate in a non-toxic way, unlike what we see in today's baseball yeah. world on social media and, and coaches. And this is what makes, I think, the game really fun for people who work in it when it comes to scouts and baseball operations people. You can have a diverse set of ideas um, 
and you could talk about those ideas without being toxic. And that's exactly what you and Charlie were able to do when you came from two, what were, was at the time from your father's Absolutely. completely different hitting backgrounds. Right. Uh, totally opposite, opposite ends of the side. Like, you know, liberals and conservatives, you know, in terms of right. hitting, yeah. like we were able to have that conversation and, and uh, be totally civil at the end of the conversation, you know, uh, say, you know what, I, I see what you're talking about. And he would say, I see what you're talking about. And okay. Uh, but Charlie was like, his son was no joke. Like Charlie Jr. worked with uh, like A-Rod, you know, when A-Rod was, was coming out. So like, it's just a very knowledgeable guy. It wasn't just a guy that dad wrote a book and was a, right. a major league hitting coach for a while. You know, I mean, he, he had a business and, and he had a, a good name and he was a good teacher and um, probably used a few more profanities than, than I usually use, uh, you know, so he was a harsh, he was kind of a harsher guy, yeah. but uh, yeah. And I wish it would, I wish the game would be a little bit more like that, but you know what, when you hide behind a computer and, and you're on social media, it's just a toxic environment when it comes to um, hitting right now. You know, unfortunately, it, it's uh, it's turned into that. So, you yeah, know, put out become, your information yeah. and see what works. It may become more toxic after the lightning beat the avalanche. Hey, uh, don't forget to email the show, Jimbo Podcast 21 <laughs> at gmail.com. Forget the main topic. That's the common thread of today's show. Yeah, it is. I think the so. Lightning. Yep. <laughs>